You've come to Sabbath school. Welcome to Sabbath school. You've come to Sabbath school. Welcome to Sabbath school. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to our 100th episode. We are so excited that you have joined us for 100 episodes. You have helped to make this a blessing for not only you, but for us as well. We have enjoyed making these programs for you. Each and every episode comes with love from us, from you, and from all these other people that have contributed over 100 episodes. I'm so excited to say thank you to each and every one of you because you have made it a huge success without you and God influencing you to be a part of this program. We wouldn't be able to share a hundred stories, a hundred memory verses, a hundred songs, a hundred episodes of crafts and activities and things to do on Sabbath just for you and your friends to share Jesus with people everywhere. So yes, we are excited to show our 100th episode today. I know. So without further ado, let's go. Hi boys and girls. With this being the 100th episode, we have so many things in store for you today. A lot of crafts, a lot of activities, a lot of memory verses, a lot of singing, plenty of stories. I hope you enjoy. Bye. Hey, boys and girls. Welcome to our 100th episode of Bladensburg Children's Connection. You guys have been so diligent, so fun to serve. It's been awesome. And we thank you so much for sticking around with us for 100 episodes man that's so awesome so what we're gonna do to celebrate also is we're gonna celebrate by reading the word of god and to celebrate our 100th episode anniversary we are going to be reading from psalms chapter 100 and it's five verses long but it's the 100th chapter of psalms and this is what it says make a joyful shout to the lord all you lands Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. So one of the things that we want to remember is that God is our God and we are the sheep of his pasture. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. So I hope you've enjoyed these first 100 episodes, but please know that it's not done. We're going to continue with more content. So please get ready for the next 100 episodes. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye-bye. Happy Sabbath. Bye. In today's activity, let's do a gratitude scavenger hunt to go with our memory verse, Psalms 100. Let's find something that makes you happy let's find something to give someone else to make them smile let's find one thing that you love to smell let's find one thing that you enjoy looking at let's find something that's your favorite color Let's find something you are thankful for in nature. Let's find something that you can make or use to make a gift for someone else. Let's find something that someone has given you. 
Let's find something that you like to hug. And let's find our favorite memory verse. That was 10 things that we could find that help us in our gratitude scavenger hunt. I hope you enjoyed it as an activity for today. Bye. God loves you very much. Daniel 10, 19. God loves you, you should know, every finger, every toe. God loves you, strong and true, top to bottom, through and through. God loves you, here and there, anytime and anywhere. God loves you, far and wide, can you feel his love inside? Dear God, thank you for loving me with all your heart. Amen. Jesus. And remember, when you go through the week, please share Jesus with someone. We love you. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Today's devotion story is called Ravens Give Elijah Food. It's taken from 1 Kings chapter 16. King Ahab ruled God's people, the Israelites, but he was not a good king like King David or even a wise king like King Solomon. King, king Ahab was a very bad king. He didn't follow or honor God. He led the people away from God. He made fake gods out of stone and prayed to them. King Ahab did more bad things than all the other kings of Israel before him. God was very angry with King Ahab. Elijah was God's prophet at the time. He gave people messages from God. So God sent Elijah to King Ahab. Elijah told the king that no rain would fall on the land until God said so. It would be very dry for years. King Ahab got very angry. So God told Elijah to run away and hide near a stream named Kirith. He had to stay right where the stream flowed into the Jordan River. Elijah obeyed God and went to Kirith. While he was hiding from King Ahab, Elijah could drink water from the stream. But where would he get food? God told big black birds called ravens to come every day and bring food for Elijah. Every morning and every night, the ravens came and brought bread and meat for him to eat. God took good care of Elijah. So from today's story, I learned that God gave Elijah a hard job to do, but God took care of Elijah. He sent Elijah to a safe place and gave him food and water. And God will take care of me and you too. I can spell the name of the birds that helped Elijah. Can you spell it? Ravens. R-A-V-E-N-S. Ravens are huge blackbirds. They look a little bit like crows and they make loud sounds that make them sound very brave. Genesis 8 tells us that a raven was the first bird got, that Noah let out of the ark to see if the floodwaters had gone down. Let's pray, boys and girls. Dear God, Thank you for taking care of Elijah. You gave him a hard job to do, but you didn't leave him alone. Thank you for taking care of me too. Amen. The memory verse for today's devotion is taken from Psalms 116 verse 1. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. The activity for today's story is a color page of Elijah talking to King Ahab. The link is in the description box below. Thank you for coming to Children's Sabbath School today. We hope you enjoyed learning about Jesus today. And please, please, please share a story about Jesus with somebody today. And I hope you have a good rest of your Sabbath. Bye. Love you. Let's visit two countries of the world. The first country is China, and it's a country in Asia. 
A fun fact about China is the Great Wall of China is the longest structure ever built. It is one of the wonders of the ancient world. The next country is Egypt and it is in Africa. A fun fact about Egypt is the world's longest river called the Nile flows north through Egypt. That's right, it flows up. We have two activities that you can complete in the description box below. Please have your parents go through the description box and find the link to the two activities. Enjoy, bye. Hi, boys and girls. It's song service time. Our first song is, if you're happy and you know it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then you like to show the show. But if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then you like to show the show. But if you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have C H R. 
Hola, buenos dias kids. I'm joining you all the way from San Jose, Costa Rica. It's out in Central America. I just want to say thank you for coming to Children's Sabbath School today. We hope you enjoy learning about Jesus and make sure to tell someone you know about Jesus. We love you. Have a great day. Bye. Today's story is called Queen Esther. Who do you stay with when you can't be with your parents? Well, Esther's cousin cared for her for a long time. Esther, a pretty little girl, lived in the land of Persia. When both of her parents died, Esther went to live with her older cousin, Mordecai. Mordecai loved Esther and cared for her as if she were his own daughter. As Esther grew to be a young woman, Mordecai taught her all the things her parents would teach her. He taught her to be kind and helpful. He taught her to be honest and brave. And he taught her to love and worship God. Although Esther and Mordecai lived in Persia, they weren't Persian. They were Jewish. And Mordecai didn't want Esther to forget the God of her people. When Esther was a young woman, the king of Persia decided to look for a new queen. Young women from all over the country were called to the palace. The king would choose a new queen from among them. Esther was one of those young women. Each young woman there enjoyed a year of special care before they went to meet the king. During this time, they lived in a special part of the king's palace and... There, they were cared for by special helpers. Esther was such a kind, thoughtful girl that soon she became friends with one of the men in charge of the girls. He gave her seven special maids, the best food, and the best place to stay. Mordecai worked in the king's palace. He could walk in the gardens near where the young woman lived. There, he could find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. Finally, it was time for Esther to meet the king. Would he like her? Would he like her more than all the other women? Would he make her queen? The king did like her. Mordecai had raised her well. She was not only beautiful, she was kind and sweet, and she won the king's favor. The king put a royal crown on Esther's head and made her queen of Persia. He gave a great feast for her. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the entire country and gave lots of gifts in honor of his new queen. Mordecai had cared for Esther most of her life and he didn't stop caring for her when she became queen. Mordecai and Esther were part of God's family. And people in God's family never stop caring for each other. How can you show others that you care for them? Think of several things you can do. Can you help people in your family? Can you pray for them? Sing a song for them? Or give them a hug? Show your love to someone in your family today. Now it's time for questions to see if you're paying attention to the story. First question. Who was Queen Esther's cousin? That's right, Mordecai. And how did Mordecai take care of Queen Esther? That's right, he taught her a lot of things, like how to be kind and helpful, how to be honest and brave, and most of all, how to love and worship God. Last question. Why did the king choose Esther to be his queen? That's correct. He liked her more than all the other women because she was not only beautiful, but she was kind and sweet and honest. Thanks for paying attention to our story. Let's stop here and share Jesus with someone today. 
I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. Praise the Lord, my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I don't want to be a Pharisee, no way. I don't want to be a Pharisee, uh uh. Cause they're no fair, you see. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. Praise the Lord, my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I don't want to be a hypocrite, no way. I don't want to be a hypocrite, uh uh. Cause they're not hip with it. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. Praise the Lord, my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I don't want to be a Sadducee, no way. I don't want to be a Sadducee, uh uh. Cause they're so sad, you see. I don't want to be a Sadducee. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. Praise the Lord, my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. Today's nature moment is about pelicans. Pelicans are very interesting birds. Do you know that a pelican doesn't breathe through their nose? Nope, they're called mouth breathers. Even though they have large, huge beaks, and you would think a large, huge nose, they only breathe through their mouth, not their nostrils, as their nostrils are sealed off. The average lifespan of a pelican is from 10 to 30 years old. It's a big, huge range, and it depends on the type of pelican that it is. Pelicans are one of the largest birds in North America. They like to eat fish, and they are colorful. They have white and black wing tips, but their bills, their mouth, and their feet are orange. The wingspan of a pelican can be more than six and a half feet long. And their mouth is so big, they can hold up to three gallons of water in their throat. They're excellent flyers and can soar like eagles with their giant wings. The great white pelican is the heaviest species, weighing about 15 kilograms. The last fun fact about pelicans is that they're social birds. They like to fly in groups called flocks. The memory verse for today's pelican fact is Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Boys and girls, I want you to know that God takes care of you and he knows all of your needs and things that you want and he will provide them for you. Please know that you are far more valuable than birds and God will always see to it that you are taken care of. Love you, boys and girls. you didn't expect to see me today <laughs> well I just got word that today is our hundredth episode yes the Bladest Bird Children's Connection is celebrating their 100th episode today isn't that exciting and I'm so happy to be a part of it I hope you kids have enjoyed the songs Bible stories crafts jokes and most importantly, learning about Jesus. And I pray that God will bless this channel to have many more episodes. 
Love you. Bye. Bye, babies. Bye. Mwah. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I'll be bringing you the second mission story of this 13th Sabbath period. Our 13th Sabbath mission stories will be coming from the North America division. That means that most all of our stories will be coming from right here inside the United States. Does anybody remember where our story came from last week? That's correct, Arizona. Our story this week will also come from Arizona, and it's about another student that went to the Hallbrook Seventh-day Adventist Indian School, and that was the same school we talked about last week. This young lady's name is Quintina, and she is 15 years old. The name of the mission story is called Praying Sisters Into School. Praying Sisters Into School. Now, Quintina is telling this story herself, so I'm going to read what she wrote. Quintina says, when I was in the fifth grade, I traveled with my father to the Holbrook Seventh-day Adventist Indian School. I was so excited about living there because my auntie, the young lady we talked about last week, she also went there. And every time she came home on vacation or for summer break, she always talked about the fun time that she was having, all the Bible stories she was learning, and all the good vegetarian food that they served in the cafeteria. My grandmother, Quintina says, pulled out a large cookbook that had lots of vegetarian recipes so Quintina would know what she was getting into. Quintina says, once I got to Hallbrook, some of the girls in my class bullied me and I got caught reacting to them. Quintina probably yelled back at them or maybe even got in fights. Quintina says, I was sent to the principal's office a lot. Then I began to fall back in my schoolwork. I began to fall behind. School was very frustrating, Quintina said. One time I told a teacher, just give me an F. The teacher patiently worked with me, but I still was falling, well, excuse me, was failing in most of my subjects. One day a teacher gave me some extra credit to do and it, and if I did it, it would raise my grade to an A. I was so excited. Soon all of my grades began to improve. I began to like school, Quintina said. The staff noticed a positive change in me, but I did not know how to accept all the compliments that I was getting when all the staff was telling me how proud they were and how well I was doing. I found a way to get in trouble the next day, Quintina says. To my surprise, they did not send me home. Instead, they worked with me to help me learn to make better choices. Then my auntie, the young lady we talked about last week, she got into trouble at school and decided she didn't want to come back to Holbrook to study. Well, my grandmother said I also had to return home because she didn't want to make a two hour trip from home one way just to pick up Quintina. The staff made arrangements for me um, to take me home and pick me up during vacation so I could continue studying at Holbrook. When I got home on vacation, I shared the Bible stories that I had learned at school and in church with my younger sister. She decided that she wanted to go to Holbrook. Each year at Holbrook, I learned a little more about God. Because of the trouble I got in, I began to work with a mentor. A mentor is someone that helps you to and guide you and put you in the right direction, helps you to think about things more positively and more productively. So the mentor, she shared things with me about God and did nice things for me to show me that she cared about me. 
When I told her that I wanted to be baptized, she said, why? I explained that I wanted to help my family. I thought that I could see a, if they could see a positive change in me, then they also would want to change. My mentor studied the Bible with me and three friends at the Hallbrook. I learned more about Jesus and how he came to show us what God is like. I also learned that I could pray to him and ask him to help me. I began to pray for my older sister. At first, I did not see a change in her. But then one day she announced she wanted to study at Holbrook. Then my younger sister came too. I am thankful that I came to Holbrook and learned that God loves me and my family. Thank you for your 13th Sabbath offering that will help Holbrook Seventh-day Adventist Indian School this quarter. Happy Sabbath. Hey kids, you got the joy? Sing with us right now. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to say. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus. boys and girls and welcome to Mission Spotlight. Our story this morning takes place in Arizona at the Hallbrook Seven-Day Adventist Indian School. Did you know that in the state of Arizona, if you cut down a cactus, you could end up in jail for 25 years? The Saharago cactus can grow up to 50 feet tall, but it grows very slowly and can live for 200 years. Our story this morning is entitled Stubborn Molina. Do you know what stubborn means? Well, the girl's dean at the Seventh-day Adventist School thought she was stubborn until she met 11-year-old Molina. Naomi, the assistant girls dean at the Hallbrook Seventh-day Adventist Indian School tried to awaken Melina by singing a song at 6 a.m. Melina remained asleep. She tickled her, patted her arm, and gently rocked her. Melina still slept. She challenged her to an energetic match of blanket tug of war. Melina played the game, but was sound asleep 25 minutes later. Melina also did not want to clean her room or do her homework, but the girl's dean's biggest challenge was convincing Melina to take a shower. She tried everything that she could think of to convince the girl to bathe. 
It wasn't that Melina didn't want to take a shower. She simply wanted to wash when she felt like it. Unfortunately, Melina rarely wanted to wash when the girl's dean wanted her to wash. The girl's dean might have been frustrated by Melina's stubbornness, but she was equally stubborn. However, you would never guess that anyone was frustrated at bedtime. The girls, Dean and Melina, always sang a song about Jesus. Then Melina took the girls, Dean hand to pray for a long list of requests. Dear Jesus, I say that you bless my grandma, and I say that you bless Mrs. Kennedy's son, and I say that you bless Melina, that you bless Melina prayed. When she finished, she locked her arms around the Dean's neck and screamed, blow dryer. The girl's Dean turned on the invisible blow dryer and proceeded with the sound effects to melt Melina's arms away from her neck. As she blew the blow dryer, the challenge of the day also melted away. As months passed, Melina began to be less stubborn about taking showers. But then after a few days of successful showers, the girl's dean would catch Melina fully dressed sitting at her desk with a peaceful expression on her face, passing the time away. Get in the shower, she would bark. Melina knew how to be stubborn but so did the girls dean. By the time the school year was, was more than half over, Melina rarely had an issue with showering on time. Working with her became easy. Then one evening, she came into the dorm with a beverage she wanted to drink before bedtime. She didn't realize she wouldn't sleep well if she drank it. A struggle ensued, finally tucked under the blankets with tears in her eyes. Melina refused to sing, pray, and turn on the blow dryer. When the girl's dean left, she whispered by Melina's bedside, I love you, Melina. Still awake, remain silent. The following morning, the girl's dean was walking down the hall to ensure that the elementary girls were preparing for school when Melina entered the hallway. The girl's dean stopped, thrilled at the sight of her beloved sleepyhead venturing so far from the comfort of her bed at that hour. Melina wrapped her arms around her with a good morning hug. I'm sorry for my behavior last night, she said. I am sorry I became frustrated with you, the girl's dean replied with a hug. The children aren't the only ones learning at the school. The girl's dean says, as I try to teach Melina what it means to follow, to be a follower of Jesus, she teaches me about God's grace. The girl's dean wants to be less stubborn too. Thank you for your 13th Sabbath offering that will help Holbrook Seven Day Adventist Indian School. I think the story should be called, I Met My Match. It seems like the girl's dean also learned how to be less stubborn in this story. Thank you boys and girls and we'll see you next week. Hey boys and girls, today we're going to be making a t-shirt craft. So let's get right into it. The items that you're going to need are a t-shirt of your choice or any color, um, a printer and, uh, and your computer, and you can have a picture or a poem of your choice. You'll need a pair of scissors, saran wrap or cling wrap, they're kind of the same thing, parchment paper, your iron and an ironing board, and of course, mommy and daddy's help. Here's just a few items. Again, the scissors, your parchment paper, and your cling wrap, and my ironing board. As you can see, I have my t-shirt next to me. So let's go ahead and get started. OK, 
Okay, so now that you have your picture or your poem that you want for your t-shirt, you're going to lay it flat on your ironing board exactly how you want it to look. Okay, and so next you're going to um, take your t-shirt, put it onto your ironing board, and you're actually going to take cling wrap and put it on your t-shirt directly on top of your t-shirt okay so once you do that then you can start placing your words face up exactly how you want it words or your image on your cling wrap on your t-shirt directly how you want it you're going to add more cling wrap directly on top of that and then you're going to add parchment paper on top of the cling wrap and now you're going to want to go ahead and grab your iron and make sure it's nice and hot um, and put it on the cotton setting so what the ironing does is actually pretty much melts the saran wrap onto the t-shirt so just going to keep doing that until everything is nice and seamless as you can see, it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and do peeling. All right. And I'm sure yours looks amazing. Now, keep in mind, this is not really something that you can wear out or wash, but it is really fun to make. And now, here is what it looks like when it's all done. See? All finished. So, if you didn't get a chance to read it as I was placing it down, the poem says, COVID tried to make us quit. Give us a frown but we're not having it. We've got 100 videos down. So while he's having a fit, we thank Jesus for always holding up our crown. I hope you guys enjoyed this craft today. Keep having fun on our 100th video. See you later and happy Sabbath. Bye-bye. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to eat this delicious ice cream and not have a way to scoop it in your bowl? Well, what would you do? How would you eat the ice cream? Would you use your hands? I have the answer for you because I know who created the best way to get ice cream out of its container. Alfred L. Crail. He was an African-American businessman and inventor who was best known for inventing the ice cream scoop in 1897. Crail was born on September 4th, 1866 in Virginia, just after the end of the American Civil War. He attended local schools and worked for his father in the carpentry trade. During that time, he became interested in mechanics. Crail was sent to Washington, D.C., where he attended Wayland Seminary. A seminary is where you learn all about Jesus and how to study the Bible and to teach it to other people. At that school, he learned a lot about the Bible and he also learned a lot about Jesus. He later on went to a school in Pennsylvania where he worked for a porter at a drugstore and at a hotel. While working at the hotel, he developed the idea of the ice cream scoop. It came to him when he noticed ice cream servers having difficulty trying to get the popular confection desired by the customer into the cone they were usually holding. The ice cream tended to stick to spoons and ladles and usually requiring the server to use two hands and at least two separate implements to serve the customers. Crail responded to that problem by creating a mechanical device now known as the ice cream scoop. The patent was finished February 2nd, 1897, and the 31 year old was granted his patent. Crail invented a lot of other ideas, but the original ice cream scoop, originally called the ice cream mold, 
was designed to keep ice cream and other food from sticking to it. And it was his most popular invention yet. Since then, the ice cream scoop has been created in various different ways, but it all originated from Mr. Crail. Today's Black History moment was none other than Alfred L. Crail. Hey boys and girls, let's go on a quick nature walk. It's so beautiful out here. The sun is shining and the sky is clear. God made so many beautiful colors. Wow, look at those beautiful flowers. Do you guys see that bird? Let's see if we can hear it make some really cool sounds. Wow, that's so cool. Oh, there it goes. Did you see that hint of orange underneath its wing? That was so pretty. Remember, boys and girls, let's get outside and enjoy all the things that God has created. Have a great day and happy Sabbath. Sabbath. I hope you're enjoying all the really awesome activities that we're doing today on our 100th episode. And so as you can see, we're going to go ahead into another one. Today we have a color by picture and it is in, as you can see, the number 100. I'm going to put the link below. So if you want to go ahead and pause this, head to the link. This is a free printable that I have found on Pinterest. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, as you can see, it's 100 because it's our 100th episode. The icons that we're going to be uh, coloring today are a bunny, an ice cream, Curious George's hat, a crayon, a beach ball, and a red apple. And those are the colors that will be next to it. So I have my color pencils here, so we'll need colors yellow purple, green, blue, orange, and red. If you don't have color pencils, you can use markers or crayons or paint, whichever one you'd like. And then afterwards, we're actually going to count how many of each icon is in there and we'll see if it adds up to 100. Are you guys ready? Let's go ahead and get started. 
All right, now that we have all of our materials, including our principal page and our uh, colors of choice, let's go ahead and get into our first color and our first icon. The first icon is actually the bunny. So let's see if we can find all the bunnies inside of our 100, okay? So go ahead and pause this video and color all of the bunnies. I'm gonna go ahead and grab mine and go ahead and start coloring. All right, there we have it. We have all of our yellow bunnies. Now let's go ahead and grab our purple color pencil. I have mine right here. Go ahead and grab our purple color pencil and let's start coloring our ice cream cones. All right, go ahead. All right, there we have it. As you can see, I did the first one and it didn't really look like an ice cream cone after I colored it in. So I took a brown color pencil and I went ahead and did the ice cream cones on each of them and then I did my ice cream scoop. So it looks more like an actual ice cream. Um, and so now let's go ahead into our next color, which is green and it is going to be the hats. So let's go ahead and start coloring that now. All right, great job boys and girls. This is looking really great so far. And I hope you're kind of keeping in mind that we will be counting these soon and we'll see how many of each there are. Now let's go ahead and go on to our next color, which is blue and we're finding the crayons. So let's go ahead and grab our blue color pencil and let's get coloring. So that one went by pretty fast. As you can see, there weren't that many crayons in our 100 picture, but we'll count them later on just to make sure, right? So now let's go on to our next color. We only have two colors left and it's going to be our beach ball icon in the color orange. So let's go ahead and grab that there. There we go, your color orange. And let's start finding those beach balls. All right, boys and girls, we are down to our last icon and our last color. As you can see, it is the apple and the color red. So let's go ahead and color these apples and then we can start adding them all up. Okay, now that we have all of our apples colored in, let's go ahead and start counting the first item, which is our hats. Let's count together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Whew, that was a lot of counting. Let's go ahead and write 30 next to our hat and keep counting. All right, on to our blue crayons. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's it. Let's go ahead and write number 5 in our space next to the blue crayon and keep on counting. Great job, boys and girls. All right, on to the orange beach balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Great job. Count the bunnies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Great job! Fifteen in the bottom. Count the ice creams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15 ice cream scoops, my goodness. Last one, let's count the apples. One, two, three, four, five. Great job, boys and girls. Now that we have all of our numbers, let's go ahead and add them up together. All right, so 
now let's go ahead and take all of our numbers and add them up. So 30 plus 5 equals 35. 30 plus 15 equals 45. And 15 plus 5 equals 20. Now what we're going to do is add up 30 plus 45 plus 20. And please make sure that you have your mommy and daddy help you with these really big numbers, okay? So 30, I'm sorry, 35 plus 45 equals, so you see 5 and 5 is 10, so we're going to put the 0 down. And then 4 plus 3 is 7, but we have to add 1 to the 7, so that means that 35 plus 45 is 80. And then we have our second number, 15 plus 5, which is 20. So then we're going to add 80 plus 20. And 8 plus 2 is 10. So we add another, another 0 and it's 100. Great job, boys and girls. We've counted to 100. I hope you enjoy this craft today. Please keep having fun. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed learning about Jesus today. Now share Jesus with someone. Thank you for coming to Sabbath School. I pray that it was a blessing to you. Please share with your friends during the week about what you learned in Sabbath School. We hope to see you next week. Have a blessed Sabbath. God bless you and have a good week. Enjoy learning about Jesus and sharing with your friends. Amen. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye. It's prayer time, boys and girls. Let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for blessing and keeping us. Thank you for watching over us and protecting us. Thank you for being with our family and our friends and for showing them love. Thank you for blessing us with a place to sleep and food to eat. Please continue to watch over our friends and our family and keep them safe. Please help those who help others and teach others new things. Please continue to give us the things that we need and to help others learn more about you. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Our Sabbath school is over and we are going to church. Goodbye, goodbye, be always kind and true. Goodbye, goodbye, be always kind and true. Bye, boys and girls. See you next time.